All social media is just a tool. And in the same way as it's our job to work out how to use the camera in our hand to take good images, it's also our job to work out how to use social media to our advantage and to stop blaming the tools themselves. Let's take Instagram for example. I know a lot of people have a love-hate relationship with Instagram, but usually when I get into conversations with somebody who's having a frustrating time with Instagram, it's quickly apparent that the reason they're frustrated is because they have expectations that aren't being met. But maybe instead of having unrealistic expectations of tools like Instagram that should give us fame and fortune as quick as possible, we should actually take a look at realistically how the platform works and what benefits we can get out of it right now. So I'm going to give you one do and one don't that have helped me to keep Instagram in perspective, to, to keep my expectations in check and to make sure that day in and day out I'm using it for things which add value to me in the meantime. Let's start with this. Don't chase attention. Now let me be honest right up front, this isn't one of those videos that promises that if you follow my advice you're guaranteed to have Instagram success because I don't know how to do that, if I'm honest, and I don't think anyone does really. Even if you follow these videos out there that say seven tips to guarantee your Instagram account is gonna blow up. I mean, that's helpful advice, stuff like posting consistently and having a consistent look to your images and hashtagging, writing good descriptions, engaging with other people, all that stuff is good and well, but even if you follow that entire checklist, there's no guarantee that your Instagram account will explode because there's lots of things we can't control. Things like we don't really know how the algorithm works. Plus, we don't know if your images are very good. If they're not great, it's naive to think if you just follow a checklist, thousands of people will flood to your account. It doesn't really work like that. And I'm not trying to make you feel bad. I wanna be realistic with you, and I'll use myself as an example. So as it stands today, I have roughly just over 180,000 followers on Instagram. And I don't have those followers because I hacked the system and I'm some kind of genius who worked it out or because I'm a brilliant photographer who deserves all those people following me. I have those followers, to be brutally honest with you, because they came across from YouTube. Because before YouTube, I had maybe two, 3,000 followers who were following what I was doing and I was grateful for those. But because I started YouTube, I didn't suddenly overnight become a brilliant photographer who was worthy of that size of following. And it's important to understand how platforms like Instagram work. I had a guy on my Instagram account the other day. He, he posted a comment under an image I'd taken. And he said, this sort of stuff really makes me angry because if I posted exactly the same image you just posted on my account, I get maybe 30 likes and you've got like 7,000 likes. And I went across to his account, he had, maybe one or 200 followers. And I said to him, do you really not understand why this is the case? It's not because this is a brilliant image. It's because my followers like this image. And if it's only 7,000 people who like it, that's a fraction of the 180,000 people who follow me who've liked it. It's still not very good. It's the people who follow you liking your stuff. It's not because we're putting it out into a general pool and they're judging our work, deciding whether our images are good or bad. Likes don't mean what you think they do. Expecting to throw your images out onto a platform like Instagram, which has over 95 million images uploaded to it every single day, and for people to discover your image in the humongous pile of content that's being posted, and then to sit there waiting to see if the likes come in and to have that be the measure about whether you posted a good image or not is naive at best. Chasing likes and follows to convince yourself that you're a good photographer is really a fruitless game and even if you get that attention, it doesn't mean what you think it does. I know some incredible photographers out there with really small accounts and low engagement and I know cats with millions of followers and hundreds of thousands of likes a day. That attention is not a judge of how good your photography is. If you care about your photography, there's also a real danger in chasing those likes because you can just post something to feed an audience who will give you something back that you want, this intangible number that says how many people liked an image you posted. I mean, I know of the images I post, which ones will get the likes, but I also know that I like the images more that people don't actually like as much. And I want to post those and I want to keep developing and moving things in a different direction because I want my photography to be changing. So even if they get less likes and people jumping on in the comments going, this doesn't look like your normal stuff, I don't like it. I don't care what you like. I'm shooting for me and I'm developing as I go. I'm not feeding an audience to feed on likes. It's very easy to ride your own trends. I mean, I'm known a lot on my Instagram account for using uh, black and white, high contrast, hard light and shadow, and often a diagonal cutting the frame because that's something I'm drawn to. I like using those kind of shapes. But I also know that that's 
fast becoming a trend a lot of people are using. And I'm not for a minute suggesting I came up with that, by the way. I mean, Fan Ho was doing that stuff in the 50s and 60s in Hong Kong. We're all influenced somewhere, but loads of people are doing that sort of thing now. I already want to be moving on to the next thing. Even though I know when I post those images, they'll get a lot of likes. And I will still post them because I like shooting those frames, but I have to be thinking about the next thing and moving forward, even if it gets less attention. In fact, if you're a serious photographer who wants their work to keep evolving, I think you have to avoid any trend, either the ones you set for yourself or the ones that are out there already. And you have to post images you love. You have to always be moving on to the next thing, even if when you post it, people don't like it as much or they make negative comments about it because you're moving all the time. The other obvious issue with just following the trends is loads of people are already doing it. That's why it's a trend. So if you're someone else trying to shoot that same sort of image, you're going to get lost in this huge soup of people taking the same sort of shots and you're not going to stand out. It's better to risk. Risk and shoot images the way you see and back yourself. Keep going with it. Test it, experiment with it, be brave and post that for a while even if it gets no attention because you might be coming up with something truly unique. And it's an obvious thing but it probably needs to be said that popularity does not equal mastery. The general population isn't necessarily a good judge of what great art really is. I mean take the next Transformers movie that comes out that is directed by Michael Bay. It will collectively have cues that are hundreds of miles longer than let's say the next Terrence Malick movie that comes out. But if you talk to anyone who understands and knows filmmaking, they will tell you that Terrence Malick is an infinitely better and more masterful filmmaker than Michael Bay is. Popularity does not necessarily signify mastery. So shoot for you and post your work to share it with the world, but don't get stuck in chasing likes and follows because I promise you they don't mean what you think they do. And here's a positive way you can use Instagram to inspire you and improve your work do curate your feed. I mentioned this in my recent autodidact video that I hear a lot of people complaining that they're sick of going through Instagram. It's all just the same stuff. It's so repetitive. Everyone's copying each other. There's nothing interesting to look at anymore. In fact, I sat down this week with a photographer friend of mine who was saying exactly the same stuff and I'm going to tell you what I told him. If you're seeing repetitive, uninspiring images in your Instagram feed and you're getting fed up with it, it is entirely your fault because you tell Instagram what images you want to see and which photographers you want to follow. And like any good robot, it's just serving up what you told it to serve up. If you don't like the images that you're seeing, it's time to start curating your feed. I use Instagram for inspiration. I don't just hit follow randomly. I take ownership of the people that I follow and create a feed that I know will inspire me. So if I have five minutes at any point in the day, I flick through my Instagram account to inspire me from photographers who challenge my thinking in the way that they shoot and who get me thinking differently about my own work. And the point isn't to find people to imitate. It's broader than that. It's to build a soup of people who are constantly feeding through images that challenge you from photographers who are further down a road that you want to journey down and who can get you thinking about your own work and drawing you forward. And sometimes finding those accounts is quite an intuitive thing. It can be seeing a set of images that just has something in you that says, wow, there's something in here that I know I need to learn from and I'm drawn to it. Now I'm going to share with you some of those accounts I find really inspirational at the moment that are drawing me forward. But the point isn't just to copy my list. Of course, go along and give them a follow if you find their work inspiring as well. But this exercise is only really going to be valuable if you assess your own photography, the direction you want to go, and find photographers who are further down the particular road that you want to walk down. So I'll start with David Clark, who's from Melbourne, Australia, the thin black frame on Instagram. I love his work. Uh, I think it's very, very um, minimal in a way, very clean, uh, beautiful light and shadow use, very hard light and shadow, which is obviously why I'm drawn to it. And I feel like there's stuff to learn in here. Um, he's shooting less in the frame than I do sometimes, and he's not quite as uh, rigid with his compositions as I am, and it's really challenging me to think outside the box. At Iowerth on Instagram is another great one. A photographer who uh, has a beautiful use of color uh, in his work, has a lovely consistency throughout, but also um, taking images of fairly, what you might walk past and think of mundane scenes, but making them absolutely beautiful. Uh, in the work that he does. Again, challenging me on framing and, and composition, lots of negative space in skies and and again just using very very simple lines and yeah I think it's the color in this that really draws me and it, and it is an intuitive thing. I saw this guy's stuff and thought there is something in this that I need to learn from and I haven't quite worked it out yet but he has some beautiful beautiful work. 
I mean, how simple is that? Just, you know, a, a, a glass of milkshake on a countertop, but those colors, the blue, the yellow, the pink, work so well together. And I have that logged away now that the next time I see something like that, there might be an image in it where before I may have walked past it. This guy, Stuart Payton, really blows my mind every time. I really love his work, and I'm lucky enough to call him a friend now. Um, underscore Stuart, underscore Payton, underscore on Instagram if you want to find him. We were both part of uh, an exhibit last year of street photography, and I was unfortunate enough to have my images on the walls next to his, because I just his just blow me away. They're absolutely fantastic. So complicated in what's going on. The opposite to me, he's not trying to be simple. He's using lots of colors, and lots of shadows and lots of bright light. And, and you often have to look at his images for a while to even work out what's going on. But I find them so rich and intriguing. And somebody who's able to compose an image and wrangle that much detail and complexity into a frame deserves huge respect, I think. So he's another one who's really pushing my thinking at the moment. Eric is another one, goes under Lumino on Instagram. Um, just somebody who I love the color grading and the light use and how cinematic the images feel in his feed. Um, there's something in here I know I need to learn about, about color consistency, about light, and about different colors within a shot. And again, I mean, how simple a shot is that? Everything's out of focus, stuff's moving, it doesn't matter. There's something that draws you to it. Beautiful use of uh, light. And I think the editing in this is something that really pushes me as well. There's things I need to learn about uh, finishing up my images to give them a particular look that I want. Um, fantastic work. In the same kind of vein, Simon, who goes under uh, Ausland on um, Instagram, similar kind of thing, beautiful images, uh, I believe, yeah, he's from Sweden. Absolutely stunning stuff of his town, you know, in the snow, at night, but just beautiful kind of misty evenings often, and sort of light flaring into the, into the mist. Looking at this stuff is making me think differently about shooting in London in the cold and working out how do I how do I get some of this into my work? How do I choose colors like this? How do I create a grade like this at the end of the day? How do I find these scenes that just have such a feel to them? And while we're on the sort of more cinematic images, uh, Henri, Henry, Henry Film on Instagram uh, with an eye, he's a cinematographer and uh, the work he posts is again really challenging, amazing use of colors. And the scenes that he shows are, are just stunning. Some of the work looks like it's illustration every now and again. It's absolutely beautiful. But again, it doesn't matter. I mean, as I'm going through, it doesn't have to be pure photography. It doesn't have to be unedited stuff. It just has to get me thinking differently about the work that I do. I mean, this one I love. It looks like it's being shot through a window with rain on it. So it's almost giving it this painterly quality. I mean, what a clever idea. And his use of contrasting colors and scenes and, and misty sort of volumetric lighting, I think is absolutely stunning. Martin Rotz on Instagram, I think is a great photographer. He shoots, I believe it's on something like a Canon 60D, so a crop sensor with a longer focal length. And he goes out and he shoots these amazing just details. They become these geometric shapes of just light and shadow on the corner of, of walls and these pops of colors on reflections. And the way that he shoots, and he doesn't have a subject, he doesn't need to. This gets me thinking I need to be more experimental and creative and graphic in the way that I shoot because there's something in that that I'm being drawn to as well. He's definitely one to check out. He has a great zine that he puts out every now and again with these images called March and Rock. Uh, definitely worth going to check him out. Again, Rachel Mendes is another one I'm really enjoying at the moment from California. She's shooting some beautiful stuff that's, again, very graphical. It's about shape and it's about color and that there's something in this I need to start incorporating into my work and experimenting with because she produces work that could go on on any wall as a piece of graphic art on its own, let alone as a piece of photography. We might look at that and go, well, there's nobody in that shot. There's no one in the scene, so it's not street photography. Call it what you like. It's beautiful and it, and it really gets me thinking about what's possible. Arnold Montegard is another one, again, able to shoot very, very simple objects and just make them beautiful, things we'd walk past every day and perhaps not pay enough attention to. He has a lovely crisp uh, grade to his images and lovely pops of color that I really resonate with as well, but his work has a beautiful tone to it and, you know, something as simple as the corner of a car, you know, or some sunlight on a, on a diner table with a check wall in the background. Little things like this, I think there's things in this I need to experiment with. I mean, who makes a salt and pepper shaker look beautiful? 
this guy does. And it makes me think I need to keep my eyes open more often. There's, there's beauty in smaller things than just having to catch huge moments on the street. And speaking about making small things beautiful, uh, Halberstam on Instagram has some incredible stuff. I mean, that's just a piece of plastic over something orange, but there's something captivating about it. I mean, that's a that's a paper towel roll. There's something in there. I don't know what it is yet. Uh, very simple compositions and lots of negative space. He really, I mean this, I absolutely love this. Obviously on a ferry or something in the plastic seating and creating those sort of lines and shapes and a hand and just a shoulder and that's it. And I just think how incredible to be able to see something so beautiful and something so simple. And these are things we walk past every day. And Tanya Franco Klein, I mean, her work is really, really captivating. I mean, some absolutely stunning uses of color, some beautiful um, saturation through her work. And again, just using light and shadow and creative uh, negative space really interestingly. And again, people like this, I don't know what it is. I can't, I can't define what it is but I know I have to keep looking at their work. I have to keep spending time with it because every time I do, I have a different thought about my own work and something else jogs loose. And when I go out, I might have more ideas in terms of what I want to shoot and the direction that I want to go. So instead of complaining about social media, start taking responsibility for how you use Instagram as a tool. Yeah, that might mean you unfollow some people. It might mean you unfollow me. I'm fine with that. Just take responsibility and curate your own feed in a way that you're following photographers who inspire you, who challenge you, who give you ideas, who give you questions about your own work and who help you keep journeying on the road that you're on. And stop chasing likes and follows. I mean, you might have noticed that every single one of those photographers I just showed you has a smaller following than I do, but I consider every single one of those photographers vastly superior to me and I have a lot to learn from them. Just because you have a big following does not mean you're a super talented photographer. And just because you have a small following doesn't mean you're bad at what you do. We all know that social media can be a blessing or a curse, but I think we need to get honest about how much of that experience is down to our personal responsibility for using that tool well. I think if we keep our expectations for fame and fortune in check, and we line ourselves up with fees that inspire us and get us thinking, social media of any sort can be an incredible tool.